Lighthouse Scientific Education presents a lecture in the gas series. The topic, Fundamentals of Gas Law. The material in this lecture relies on understanding of the previous lecture, The Basics of Gas. Gas Law builds on the Basics of Gas lecture and is broken down into two lectures. The lecture that follows this one deals with gas law that has only one set of conditions. That includes the ideal gas law. Before proceeding into gas law, some perspective of gas basics will be helpful. The gas laws that are covered in this lecture that are based on two conditions are Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Avogadro's Law, and finally, the combined gas law. Often these laws are accompanied by problems, so an outline of problem solving with gas law is offered and put to the test with four problems. As for perspective, there are four basic properties used to describe gases. One way to consider the properties is through their effect on the number of collisions that the particles make. Specifically, we can consider how altering these properties creates more collisions. The first property is amount, number of particles, usually given in or turned into moles. With amount, more particles mean more collisions. Next is temperature. It is given in or turned into the temperature scale Kelvin. Temperature is a measure of heat and is related to the speed of the particles. Hotter particles move faster, and that causes more collisions. And then there is volume. An example would be the size of a container. A small container has walls that are closer together, and there is less available space for the particles to roam. That leads to more collisions. Finally, there is pressure. It is defined as force per area. In a gas, force is generated by gas particles colliding with the sides of their confinement, or really with anything. Force is proportional to the number of collisions, so anything that increases collisions increases the pressure. Considering gas from a collision perspective can help make sense of gas law. While we're at the four properties, we might as well clear up what two conditions really mean. It is simply a recognition that some condition or gas property has been changed. There will be a set of values for the four properties before the change. A 1 subscript indicates before, and a set of values for the four properties after the change. A subscript of 2 indicates after. Before and after, or initial and final, are cues that a change has occurred. Not all the properties will have different values with the change. T1 and T2 can be the same temperature. The gas laws covered in this lecture relate the change in values of two or more properties that occur with a change in condition. In addition to a familiarity with the four properties of the gas, it is helpful to have a familiarity with the kinetic molecular theory, KMT. The purpose of the kinetic molecular theory is to provide an understanding of gas as particles. It is premised on an ideal gas and is essential to building an understanding that leads to gas law. It was initially described in the Basics of Gas lecture and is further developed, for those students who will need it, in the Gas Advanced Concepts lecture. Considerations of KMT include Gas consists of large number of particles. The particles move in constant, random, straight-line motion. They speed up when they're heated. The gas particles are separated by large distances, so the volume that a gas occupies is mostly empty space. When dealing with gases, the term volume refers to the space available for the gas particles to roam around, and not the volume of the particles. Gas particles make up such a tiny part of the available volume that they can be treated as if they essentially take up none of the available volume. Their volume is neglected. Since the particles are zipping about at such high speeds, 
they can be treated as if they have no intermolecular interactions upon collisions. As long as there are no chemical reactions occurring, this is a somewhat reasonable assumption. Any collision between particles is considered as an elastic collision. Elastic, in this context, has the total energy of the collision conserved. We often treat the energy of the cube ball and pool as conserved. The energy can be transferred to the other balls, but the total energy remains constant. With this understanding of the KMT, we can proceed into gas law under two conditions. The first of those laws that we will cover is named after the 17th century natural philosopher Robert Boyle, Boyle's Law. The description of the law is that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship if the properties of amount and temperature are held constant. Mathematically, that is P times V equals a constant. The N and T in the subscript indicate that amount in moles and temperature, T, are held constant. Pressure and volume will change, but not amount and temperature. What that equation is really saying is that if one of these two properties goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. Raise the pressure, and the volume goes down. Increase the volume, and the pressure goes down. This law can be shown graphically by plotting volume on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis. As the volume is increased, the pressure is decreased. This is what inversely proportional looks like. The strength of Boyle's law is that it can be used to predict pressure volume behavior in a before and after scenario. Boyle's law says that pressure times volume equals a constant. The 1 subscript indicates that this pressure and volume are for condition 1. Usually it means a condition before a change. When a change does occur, with constant amount and temperature, there will be a new pressure and volume. The 2 subscript indicates the after change condition. Since both sets of pressure times volume are equal to the same constant, they can be set equal to each other. This four variable equation can be used to solve for any one of the variables if the other three are given. For example, say we have a two liter container under a one atmosphere pressure. According to Boyle's law, the only way the volume can be increased to four liters with constant amount and temperature is for the new pressure to go down, specifically to 0 0.5 atmospheres. The actual procedure for solving for the value is covered later in the lecture. Right now, we are interested in predicting the direction of the change, based on the equation of the law. Now, what direction would the pressure need to go for that starting volume of 2 liters to decrease to 1 liter? Boyle's law would argue for an increase in pressure, 2 atmospheres in this case. This is how Boyle's law is applied. But why does the law take this form? The law could be rationalized using the kinetic molecular theory at two conditions. Often, the best way to consider gas behavior is to focus on pressure. It is force per area. Another factor to consider is what is meant by keeping certain properties constant. For constant amount and temperature, it means that in both conditions, before and after, the same number of particles are moving at the same speed. Also keep in mind what we learned in the previous lecture. Pressure is proportional to the number of collisions with the walls of the container. This is force. These considerations, Boyle's law can be rationalized. If the volume of the container is increased, volume goes up, the walls of the container are further away from each other. The gas particles have longer distances to travel to strike the wall. That results in fewer collisions, which means less force on the walls, which means pressure goes down. Fewer collisions, lower force, less pressure. If, however, the volume of the container is decreased, 
volume goes down, the walls are closer together. The gas particles have a shorter distance to travel before striking the wall. That results in more collisions, which means more force on the walls, which means the pressure goes up. There are rational descriptions like this for each gas law, including the next one, and it is named Charles Law. This law says that volume and temperature have a direct relationship, a constant amount and pressure. The equation is that the volume value over the temperature value is a constant. Amount and pressure cannot change for this law to hold. The equation tells us that if one of these two properties goes up, the other one also goes up. If one goes down, the other one also goes down. Graphically, this can be shown with temperature plotted on the x-axis and volume on the y-axis. As temperature increases, so does volume. Directly proportional. The equation used in problem solving starts with volume over temperature at a first condition being equal to a constant. With a change of condition, a new volume over temperature equals that same constant. Of course, amount and pressure did not change. The before and after V over T ratios are set equal to each other, and the four variable two condition Charles law is ready for problem solving. For instance, a gas is found at a volume of 2.0 liters and a temperature of 255K. Under Charles law conditions, the volume is increased to 2.2 liters. Does temperature increase or decrease? Well, according to the law, if one property goes up, so does the other. Temperature, T2, will also have to go up, 275 to be exact. Actual problem solving using gas law will be discussed in detail later in the lecture. Returning to the original condition, what happens to the volume if the temperature is decreased? Right, the volume is decreased. Part of the student's responsibility with gas law is predicting whether a property's value will go up or down when a condition is changed. The gas law equation will provide the logic. Charles' law can be rationalized through the kinetic molecular theory at two conditions. Even though the law focuses on volume and temperature, it's easier to understand through pressure. Pressure is force per area. Force is about collisions. For this demonstration, we need to keep in mind that at constant amount and pressure, the same number of particles exert the same force on the container. Another important factor to consider is that hotter gas particles, higher temperature, are moving faster. They collide with the sides of the container harder and more often. They produce a greater force. Cooler gases, lower temperatures, has the particles moving slower. They collide with the sides of the container softer and less often. They produce a lesser force. Taking this understanding to the volume. If the volume of the container is increased, the walls of the container will be farther apart. If nothing else changes, there will be less collisions with the wall, producing a lower pressure. To prevent that, the gas particles will need to speed up and to strike harder to maintain the same force and constant pressure. That's a requirement of this law. The temperature will have to go up to accomplish that. If, however, the volume of the container is decreased, then the walls of the container will be closer together. The particles will not have as far to travel to strike the walls of the container. If nothing else changes, there will be more collisions with the wall producing a higher pressure. To prevent that, the particles will need to slow down and strike softer to maintain the same force and that constant pressure. Temperature will have to go down to accomplish this. Again, understanding gas from the perspective of collisions provides a rationale for gas behavior law. The third gas law is named for Joseph de Lussac. It is that pressure and temperature have a direct relationship. 
at constant amount and volume. Its equation is pressure over temperature being equal to a constant. The properties held constant with this law are amount and volume. This equation is of the same form as Charles' law, and like that law, it implies that if one of these two properties goes up, the other one also goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. Graphically, it too is similar to Charles' law. As temperature increases, the pressure increases. Another example of directly proportional. The useful version of this law is obtained by noting that for any single condition, pressure over temperature is a constant, that is, with a constant amount and volume. It is also true for a second set of conditions that follow Gay Lussac's law. Setting the two ratios of pressure over temperature equal to each other generates the four variable equation. Given three of these variables, the fourth can be solved for. For example, under conditions of Gay Lussac's law, a gas is found to have a pressure of 1 atmosphere and a temperature of 255K. What happens to the temperature if the pressure is increased to 1.2 atmospheres? The law is one of direct proportion. If pressure goes up, then so does the temperature. Conversely, returning to the original values, the temperature is decreased. We should then expect the pressure to also decrease. Reasoning out Gay Lussac's law under KMT at two conditions starts with pressure, force per area, and a recognition that at constant amount and volume, the same number of particles are in the same size container. As argued with Charles' law, hotter gases, higher temperature, has the particles moving faster. They collide the sides of the container harder and more often. They produce a greater force. Cooler gas particles, lower temperature, has the particles moving slower. They collide with the sides of the container softer and less often. They produce a lesser force. Applying these constraints to pressure. To increase pressure, gas particles need to speed up and strike the side of the container harder and more often. This occurs with a hotter gas. Temperature goes up. To decrease pressure, gas particles need to slow down and strike the sides of the container softer and less often. That occurs with a cooler gas. Temperature goes down. We have covered three gas laws so far. The last of the two property, two condition gas laws is named for Amadeo Avogadro. We know this name from Avogadro's number and the mole. It's the same guy. Avogadro's law has volume and amount in a direct relationship. That is when temperature and pressure are held constant. The equation is volume divided by amount in moles equals a constant. As with Gay Lussac's and Charles' law, if one of the two properties goes up, the other property goes up, and vice versa. There's a common set of conditions that use Avogadro's law to produce a very useful relationship. It takes place at standard temperature and pressure, STP. That is a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, or one atmosphere. At STP, one mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. That mole volume relationship is referred to as molar volume and can be used in Avogadro's law. Graphically, Avogadro's law says that as amount goes up, so does volume. When considering the law from two conditions, before and after a change, volume over amount under the first condition is equal to a constant, as is volume over amount at the second condition. Setting the two conditions equal to each other has the four variable equation used in problem solving and in trend prediction. Say there is 0 0.10 moles of gas in a cylinder under a piston. It initially has a volume of 2 liters. If more matter is added to the container at the same temperature, 
and pressure, the volume will have to change. We can use Avogadro's law to predict how that volume changes. If the amount of gas is increased to 0.2 moles, there must be a match increase in the volume. If the moles are doubled, then so is the volume. They either both go up or they both go down. Using KMT to rationalize Avogadro's law begins with the definition of pressure. Pressure equals force over area. The limitations of Avogadro's law, constant temperature and pressure, has the gas particles having the same speed affecting the same force per area. So, if volume is increased, the walls are farther apart. That means the particles have to travel further to strike the wall, which would lead to less collisions resulting in a lower force per area, a lower pressure. Since that is a violation of this law, more gas must be added. Amount has to go up to maintain the same number of collisions with the further away walls. Each individual particle will strike the wall less often, but there will be more particles. On the other hand, if volume is decreased, then the walls are closer together, which means that there should be more collisions with the side of the container, and that is an increase in force and pressure. Since this is not allowed under these conditions, gas must be removed. Amount goes down. Each individual gas particle will strike the wall more often, but there will be less of them. This will maintain the pressure. An understanding of gas law from the perspective of the law equation and KMT provide a deeper foundation. Let's take stock of what we've covered so far. Four gas laws. They each relate two of the four properties of the gas while holding the other two properties constant. In reality, these four gas laws actually spring out of or can be combined into a single equation that relates pressure, volume, amount, and temperature at two conditions. This is the combined gas law. The equation is pressure times volume over amount times temperature at one condition being equal to the same ratio in another condition. Now. If one or more quantities are constant, they can be removed from the equation. They still need to be noted as constants though, such as the case for constant amount. The combined gas law in this circumstances will have three of the four properties as variables. The fourth property is placed as a subscript to indicate that it is a constant. A similar construction of the combined gas law is found with constant temperature, as well as constant pressure and constant volume. All of these equations can be used like the other gas laws. What happens to this combined gas law if two properties are held constant? What do we get if amount and temperature are constant and only volume and pressure can vary? Why? That's Boyle's law. Remove N and T from the combined gas law and out pops Boyle's law. What if pressure and amount are held constant and only volume and temperature can vary? That's Charles' law. Keeping volume and amount constant and letting pressure and temperature change produces Gay Lussac's law. Holding pressure and temperature fixed and just letting amount and volume vary produces Avogadro's law. So, gas law at two conditions really just a manifestation of holding some properties constant and letting others adjust to circumstance. While we have all the gas laws up, we should show which set of variables trend together or trend in opposite directions. If the property variables are multiplied by each other, like in Boyle's law, then the only way for that multiplication to remain constant is that if one property goes up, the other one goes down. Conversely, if one goes down, the other goes up. Inversely proportional. If, however, one of the property variables is divided by another, as in these three gas laws, 
then to have the math produce a constant, both properties have to increase in the same proportion or both decrease in the same proportion. This analysis gives the trend of the change, which is a handy tool in addressing Gaius behavior. To actually get the value of a changed property using Gauss law, some problem solving is in order. And that is the second part of the lecture. We will use our standard problem solving approach when dealing with Gauss law. The approach will be discussed in detail before proceeding to four practice problems. The most important step in problem solving is to identify the known and unknown variables. We'll call that the setup. Gas problems usually come in one or two varieties. Does the problem have one set of conditions or two sets? One set of conditions is where any or all of the gas properties are given with only one value. As we will see in the next lecture, gas law one condition, such problems provide information of all but one of the four gas properties. The student is asked to determine the value for the one unknown property. A new constant R will be introduced there. In this lecture, we will focus on problems that give more than one value for some of the properties. A change has occurred in the problem, and two or more properties will have before and after the change values. In this setup, two or more properties of the gas will have variables for two conditions. Subscripts 1 and 2 indicate before and after the change. Properties that are unaltered or remain the same in both conditions generally can be omitted from the setup in this type of problem. A couple points of order concerning the setup need to be addressed, starting with temperature. For all gas law, all temperatures that are involved in the calculation must be converted into Kelvin. Also, there should only be one unknown. That is, all of the other variables needed to solve the equation have to be given or readily deduced. The second step is to find a relationship between the known and unknowns. The unknown variable in the equation will also need to be solved for or isolated on one side of the equation. With gas law covered in this lecture, the unknown will never be isolated by itself on one side of the equation. The equation will always need to be solved algebraically for that. In this particular example, Charles' law is the relationship, and the unknown variable T2 is in the denominator of a fraction. The math looks like it might be one of the unpleasant varieties. The good news is that this equation and the other gas law equations solve algebraically for the unknown in the same one or two steps. The two step kinds have relationship with fractions. There are denominators. Several of the covered gas laws follow under this description. The first step in isolating the unknown in these laws is to get rid of the fraction and lose the denominator. When that is done, the equation will take on a form like Boyle's law, in which there is only multiplication, no division. The second step deals with this form of the equation. But before we get to that step, we need to explore the first step, getting rid of the denominator. Turning equations with division into equations with only multiplication is accomplished by cross multiplying. And what does that entail? Take Charles' law, for instance. The cross means across the equal sign. Multiply v1 by t2 and set that equal to the multiplication of t1 times v2. v1 times t2 equals v2 times t1. The new equation does not have a denominator and can be solved with an additional step. Returning to the list of gas law under the denominator heading, these laws can be converted into modified gas laws with no denominator by cross multiplying. Starting with the law we just solved, V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. Gala Sachs law solves in a similar manner, P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. And so does Avogadro's law. V1 times N2 equals V2 
times n1. In each case, there is a pairing of a property from before the change with a property from after the change. All laws that start with denominators will be mixing before and after variables and cross multiplying. Sneaking Boyle's Law back into the list, we are now ready for the final algebra step in isolating an unknown, and that is to divide both sides of the equation by the neighbor or neighbors of the unknown variable. Bringing back this version of Charles' Law and saying that the unknown variable is t2, the neighbor of t2 is v1. Divide both sides of the equation by v1. On the left hand side of the equation, the v1s cancel out, leaving our unknown variable isolated by itself on one side of the equation. At this point, we would normally jump to step three, but it might be helpful to check out what would be needed to solve a gas law equation if the setup had different variables and the equation the relationship did not have a denominator. In that case, there would be no need for cross multiplying, and we could just jump to the final step in the algebra and noting that the unknown in the problem is v2 and the neighbor of v2 is p2, divide both sides of the equation by p2, canceling p2s out on the right hand side produces the solved algebraic equation. Take that equation with the unknown isolated on one side of the equation to the solution step, step three. Add values from the setup into the equation, cancel units, and do the math. Follow these steps closely when first attempting gas law problems. They greatly reduce confusion that sometimes accompanies new material on to four practice problems to see the steps and work. Problem one, a gas has a volume of 300 mils at 40 degrees Celsius. If the volume changes to 400 mils, what is the new temperature? Assume constant pressure and amount. An early question that one might ask of this problem is if it is a one or two condition problem. The surest way to answer that question is to see if there is a property that has two given values. Looking at the problem, it can be seen that volume given in mils has one, two condition values. The variable in the setup will have subscripts one before and two after. Onto the setup. As mentioned, there are two volumes in the problem. Which one is from before the change? Which one gets a subscript of one? Which one is from after the change? Which one gets a subscript of two? The problem says that the volume is changed to 400 mils. V2 is 400 mils. That means 300 mils must be V1. The other property it mentions is temperature. It gives one value as 40 degrees Celsius and asks for a new temperature. That tells us that there are two temperatures in this problem. Which one is the initial or the before the change temperature? A question that can be asked is whether the 40 degrees Celsius is associated with the volume V1 of 300 mils or the volume V2 of 400 mils. It is connected to V1, so it must be T1. These two are at the same condition. What does that mean for T2? Does it remain constant? If it did, the problem would not ask for a new temperature. It changes, but to what? It is the unknown. What about the other two gas properties, pressure and amount? Pressure and amount do not change and do not need to be included in the setup. Are we ready for step two? Actually, no. Degrees Celsius needs to be converted into Kelvin. Gas problems are solved in the absolute temperature scale. Fortunately, the equation is pretty straightforward. Take the temperature in Celsius and add 273.15. 40 degrees plus 273.15. 
Remember that we line up significant figures when adding, so the zero in the ones place in the 40 is the digit of last significance. T1 should be given as 313k. Actually, we can wait until the end of the problem to round, but we've done it here for demonstration purposes. Now it is time to move to step two. Here we ask what relates the known variables to the unknown variable. We should also take the constant properties of pressure and amount into consideration. Taken all together, the relationship is Charles Law. It is not, however, solve for the unknown variable T2. T2 is in the denominator, and the algebra needed to isolate this variable begins with cross multiplying. Cross means across the equal sign. That is, V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. With the denominator cleared, the second step is to divide both sides of the equation by the variable or variables next to the unknown variable. The unknown variable is T2. The variable next to it is V1. Divide both sides of the equation by V1. Cancel the V1s from the left-hand side of the equation, and T2 is isolated by itself on one side of the equation. Now it's time to solve that equation using values from the setup. V2, 400 mils, times T1, 313k, divided by V1, 300 mils. The mil units cancel out, leaving the temperature unit of Kelvin. The math, 400 times 313 divided by 300, gives a solution to the equation of 417 Kelvin. That should be added to the setup, because it is not the final answer to the problem. While gas problems are solved in the Kelvin scale, temperatures are almost never given or measured in Kelvin. Thermometers either read Celsius or Fahrenheit. This Kelvin value should be converted back into units of the starting temperature. The equation for converting Kelvin into Celsius has 273.15 being subtracted from the Kelvin value. 417 minus 273.15, actually the same rules for significant figures is applied here, gives a final temperature and a solution to the problem of 144 degrees Celsius. A quick note, we rounded temperature values twice in this problem, and it's probably best to only round once at the end of the problem. On to problem two. A sample of gas with a pressure of 75 atmospheres is initially in a one liter container. It is allowed to expand into a second one liter container. What is the new pressure if temperature is held constant? Perhaps a cartoon of this transition would help clarify the change. Starting with two one liter containers that are initially separated from each other. All the gas is in the one liter container on the left. The pressure in that container is 75 atmospheres. If the stopper between the containers is removed, the gas can sweep into the second container, effectively diluting the gas. The gas has more volume to occupy with the same amount of particles. The gas cannot exert the same amount of pressure as it did in the smaller volume. The pressure has to go down. But by how much? We again begin the process of problem solving by asking if this is a one or two condition problem. Does a search of the problem show one of the four gas properties with two different values or at two different conditions? Yes, volume changes in this problem. This is a two condition problem and properties will be given subscripts of one or two. To the setup of known and unknown variables. Since volume is highlighted, we can ask, what is the initial volume in this scenario? What is V1? The problem clearly states that the initial volume is 1.0 liters. 
initial is a term that belongs to the before the change. What is the after the change V2 value? Well, the problem says that the second volume is also 1.0 liters. So is V2 1 liter? It is not. If V1 and V2 were both 1 liter, then volume would be a constant. And that is not the case. The key term here is expanded. V1 is expanded. A volume is added to V1. 1.0 liters is added to V1. V2 is V1 plus 1.0 liters. V2 is 2 liters. What else is changing in this problem? Does temperature change? No, it's a constant. What about amount? Well, it doesn't specifically say that it is a constant, but it implies that there's a set amount of gas particles that will be allowed to flow into an additional volume. Amount is implied to be a constant. Returning to the problem, we can find the fourth property, pressure. There is also a reference to a new pressure and after the change pressure. Pressure varies in this problem. There will be a P1 and a P2. Which one gets to claim that 75 atmospheres? Well, is 75 attached to the condition of V1 or V2? It is attached to the initial volume. The new pressure is therefore attached to the new volume. P2 is our unknown. We have our values in the setup and are ready to move into the relation step. If we had had any temperature values, they would need to be converted into Kelvin here, but we do not. In this relationship step, we ask if there's an equation that relates the known and unknowns in the setup. We also keep in mind the constants, temperature and amount. What relates change in volume and pressure? Boyle's Law. P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Is the equation solved for the unknown P2? No, it is not. Since there is no denominator in the equation, there will be no need to cross multiply. So this equation is solved with one step. Isolation of the unknown is achieved by dividing both sides of the equation by the neighbor of the unknown. P2 is the unknown, which makes V2 the neighbor. Divide both sides by V2. Cancel out the V2 on the right hand side, and the P2 is isolated in the equation, which is ready for step 3. Solve the problem using values from the setup. P1, 75 atmospheres, times V1, 1.0 liters, divided by V2, 2.0 liters. Units of liters cancel, leaving atmosphere units. Expanding from volume 1 liter to 2 liters drops the pressure from 75 atmospheres to 37.5 atmospheres. Doubling the volume halves the pressure under these conditions. One property goes up while the other goes down. To be completely accurate, the 37.5 can be rounded to the two significant figure value of 38. Example 3. A sample of gas in a 10.0 liter container has observed values of 100 torr and 30.0 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure if the container is heated to 130 degrees Celsius? This problem has a slightly different look, but it will be solved in a similar manner. What type of gas problem is this? Is it under one condition or is it under two conditions? Is there a before and an after? Is there a gas property with two stated values? According to the problem, there are two different temperatures. Good bet that this is a two condition problem and the variables will have subscripts of one and two. So what are the known and unknowns in this problem? We saw that there are two temperatures, but which one is which? What is the initial temperature T1 and what is the final temperature T2? A careful reading of the problem has the gas heated 
to 130 degrees Celsius. That must be the final or the after temperature. The initial temperature will therefore be 30 degrees Celsius. It isn't necessary to find the initial value first. As long as the values are correct, the variables can be added to the setup in any order. What else changes in this problem? What about volume? It starts out at 10.0 liters. Does it change? It doesn't appear so. All the problem says is that this container is heated. Volume will therefore be treated as a constant. Does the amount change? Is any gas added, removed, or involved in a chemical reaction? No, nothing is happening to the gas except for it being heated. That leaves the fourth property, pressure, and we see that it uses the unit torr. One way to decide if the 100 torr given in the problem is P1 or P2 is to ask whether this pressure is associated with the initial or final temperature. It is associated with the 30 degrees Celsius, which is T1. The other way to approach P1 and P2 is to ask whether the new pressure called for in the problem is associated with the initial or final temperature. It belongs to the condition with the gas heated to 130 degrees Celsius. And its value is not given in the problem. It is our unknown. Before proceeding to the relationship steps, there's some cleanup work that needs to be done. The Celsius values will need to be converted into Kelvin. Bringing up the conversion equation and inserting 30 degrees in the Celsius position. The last position of significance is noted for demonstration purposes. And the addition gives a T1 of 303K. Add that value to the setup. For T2, put the 130 in the Celsius position. It too has a final significant figure in the 1's position. The addition gives T2 as 403. Add that to the setup, and we are ready to find an equation that relates the known and unknowns. What law relates changes in temperature and pressure? Remember that volume and amount are held constant. It is Gala Sachs law, and the unknown P2 is not isolated, so some algebra is in order. The first step in the process is to cross multiply in order to remove the denominators from the equation. Cross means across the equal sign. That produces the modified Gala Sachs law equation P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. Now that the equation only involves multiplication, solve for the unknown P2 by dividing both sides of the equation by its neighbor. P2's neighbor is T1. Divide both sides by T1, and canceling the T1s from the right-hand side of the equation is the isolated P2 equation. All that is left is to input values from the setup and solve. P1, 100 tor, times T2, 403k, divided by T1, 303k, with the units k canceling out, yields a final pressure of 133 torr. Temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Okay, one more. At STP, 1.0 moles of gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. What will its volume be at 4 atmospheres and 25 degrees Celsius? There seems to be a lot going on here. Is this a one or two condition problem? In the previous problems, we looked at the problem for gas properties that have more than one value. This one doesn't show that. It implies it. It expects the student to know that STP means standard temperature and pressure. Atmospheres are used here rather than millimeters of mercury because they are the units used in the problem. Since the problem provides a second pressure and temperature, we are to reason that this is a two condition problem with subscripts one and two being used. It's going to be a busy setup. We already noted that there is a change in temperature and 
resulting pressure from the initial condition of STP, T1, T2, T1, T2. The initial values of T1 and P1 are gotten from the definition of STP. These values can be memorized or looked up. It is 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere. These are exact values and have an infinite number of significant figures. As for T2 and P2, the problem says they change to 25 degrees Celsius and 4 atmospheres. So far, so good. But there isn't an unknown yet, so clearly we're not done. Returning to the problem, we see the mention of a third property, volume. It is said that at STP, by definition, one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters. The problem then goes on to ask for a new volume due to an increase in temperature, pressure. There is a V1 and a V2. We can see that the 22.4 liters is attached to the STP and must be V1. V2 is an unknown in this problem. We should also consider the property of amount. Is any gas added, removed, or involved in a chemical reaction? It doesn't appear so, and that makes amount a constant in this problem. It could be added to the setup as a constant, but it doesn't have to be. We still need to convert temperature into Kelvin before proceeding into the relationship step. To speed matters along, the steps of conversion will be omitted and 0 degrees Celsius will be said to equal a value of 273K and 25 degrees Celsius to 298K. Now, we are ready to consider the relationship between the known and unknown variables. There are more variables in this setup than in the previous three problems, but there is a gas law that can handle a change in three properties and constant amount. It is a combined gas law equation, and it is not solved for the unknown V2. This might be a more involved equation, but the unknown is isolated in the same manner as it was in the previous problems. Since the equation has denominators, the first step is to cross multiply. Everything in the numerator of the left side fraction times the denominator of the right side fraction is equal to the denominator of the left side fraction times everything in the numerator of the right side fraction. The mathematically modified combined gas law equation is V1 times P1 times T2 is equal to V2 times P2 times T1 and is ready for the isolation step. Divide both sides of the equation by the neighbors of the unknown. V2 is the unknown, and its neighbors are P2 and T1. This is the first time that we have more than one neighbor, but that doesn't change the procedure one bit. Divide both sides of the equation by P2 times T1. Since the fraction on the right side has P2 times T1 in both the numerator and the denominator, these values can be canceled out leaving V2 isolated by itself. It is time to take this very busy equation to the solution step and input values from the setup. V1, 22.1 liters, times P1, 1 atmosphere, times T2, 298K, all over P2, 4 atmospheres, times T1. 273K. Note that the unit's atmospheres cancel out, as does unit K, leaving just the unit's liters, which is consistent with an unknown volume. Getting out the calculator and multiplying 22.1 times 1 times 298, and then dividing by 4 and 273, we'll get a V2 of 6.11 liters. Noticing that P2 only has two significant figures, V2 is rounded to two sig figs, 6.1 liters. And that concludes the material for this lecture.
as a recap. Gas law was investigated in situations that involved a change in condition. Two condition laws. The first law is Boyle's law. Pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. If one goes up, the other goes down. P1 V1 equals P2 V2 when amount and temperature are held constant. Charles Law. Volume and temperature have a direct relationship. If one property goes up, so does the other. V1 divided by T1 equals V2 divided by T2 when amount and pressure are held constant. Gay-Lussac's Law. Pressure and temperature have a direct relationship. If one property goes down, so does the other. P1 divided by T1 equals P2 divided by T2 when amount and volume are held constant. Avogadro's Law. Volume and amount have a direct relationship. If one property goes up, so does the other. V1 divided by N1 equals V2 divided by N2 when temperature and pressure are held constant. These gas laws can be combined into a law of its own. It relates pressure, volume, amount, and temperature at two conditions. Any variable held constant is removed from the equation. We also looked at problem solving as related to gas law using our three-step problem solving technique. In the setup, we asked if the problem had any of the four properties of a gas given with two values. When this is the case, subscripts 1 and 2 are used to indicate before and after the change in condition. In the relationship step, we looked for a gas law based on the variables in the setup and a recognition of what properties were held constant. The unknown variable was then isolated by one or two steps. If the gas law had a denominator, we cross multiplied in order to remove denominators. With only multiplication in the equation, we divided both sides of the equation by the neighbor or neighbors of the unknown. With that, the unknown is isolated. We solved by inputting values from the setup and canceling units. And that concludes our lecture. Understanding gas law is a recognition that gas law is based on the four properties of a gas. Thank you.